again, Mr. Pien. You see, George isn't my father. He's my uncle. Uncle George. He's been my guardian since I was about two. And then, five years ago, he married a widow called Mrs. Telworthy. Mrs. Telworthy? <laughs> That's Olivia. So, she became my aunt Olivia, only she lets me drop the aunt. <laughs> Get that? Oh, uh, I think so. Um, Miss Martin. I say, you are quick, Mr. Pym. Well, if you take my advice, when you finish your business with George, you'll hang about a bit and see if you can't see Olivia. She simply, well, oh, simply devastating. I don't wonder George fell in love with her. Oh, yes, yes. It's only the merest matter of business. Just a few words with your uncle, perhaps. I, uh, well, you must please yourself, Mr. Pym. I'm just giving you a friendly word of advice. Naturally, I was awfully glad to get such a magnificent aunt. After all, marriage is rather a toss-up, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I haven't had any experience. And <laughs> George could have fallen in love with anyone. All the ladies were quite fond of him. But he married Mrs. Uh, Tellworthy. Yes, Mrs. Tellworthy. My, you are getting good with names, Mr. Pym. You see, Olivia married the Tellworthy man, and they went to Australia together. And he drank himself to death in the bush. Or wherever you drink yourself to death out there. And Olivia returned home to England and met my uncle. And he fell in love with her. And he proposed to her. <sighs> Tellworthy. Isn't it such a funny name? Oh, yes, the most peculiar name, Tellworthy. Uh, from Australia, you say? Yes, from Australia. I always say that he's probably still alive and will turn up here one morning and annoy George. Oh. <laughs> but I'm afraid there's not much chance. It's Martin, really? Well, of course, I don't really want it to happen, but it would be rather exciting, wouldn't it, Mr. Pym? <laughs> exciting? Hello. Things like that never do seem to occur down here somehow. Although, something very, very wonderful did happen last night. Oh, oh no, I'm afraid I don't know you well enough. No, really, you mustn't tell me, Miss Martin. I'm only a passerby. Until today, gone tomorrow. And yet, <laughs> there's something about you, Mr. Pym, which inspires confidence. Really? <laughs> really? You, mu you mustn't tell me. And you see, the thing is... <laughs> well... I got engaged last night! <laughs> oh, dear me. Let me congratulate you. I wish someone would come here. <laughs> I expect that's why George is keeping you such a long time. You see, Brian, my young man, the well-known painter. 
although nobody has ever heard of him. <laughs> He's smoking a pipe right now with George and asking for his niece's hand. Oh, isn't it exciting, Mr. Peter? <laughs> you really are rather lucky. I mean, being told so soon. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I must congratulate you. Um, I had better go now. I have an, an errand to run in town. Um, that's but Ah. Brian. <laughs> oh, Brian. Come this is Mr. Pym. Mr. Carraway Pym. He's been telling me all about himself. Uh, I haven't said a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. Mr. Pym, this is Brian. You know. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do, sir? Mr. Pym, you wouldn't mind running your errand now because you see, well, Brian and I. Miss Dinah and Mr. <laughs> Brian. Uh, I have only come at your life for a moment, and it is likely I shall now pass out of them forever. <laughs> well, goodbye. 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 Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Pym. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. You haven't kissed me yet. Oh, I say. <laughs> I oughtn't to. Although, one never ought to do the nice things. But why oughtn't you? Well, we said we'd be good until we told your uncle and aunt all about it. You see, being a guest in the house... But darling child, what have you been doing all this time except telling George? <sighs> Trying to tell George. Oh, yes. There is a difference. I think he guessed there was something up, and so he took me down to see the pigs. He said he had to see the pigs at once. I don't know why, an appointment perhaps. Well, we talked about pigs the whole way, and it's not as though I could say, speaking of pigs... <laughs> <laughs> no, of course you couldn't. Yes, well, you see how it was. When, when we finished talking about the pigs, well, we started talking to the pigs. <laughs> how is Arnold? Arnold? Yes, yes, he's the little black and white one. <laughs> yes, he's very jolly, I believe, but naturally I wasn't thinking about him much. I was wondering how to begin. But then Lumsden came up and wanted to talk pig food. And, <laughs> well, the atmosphere just grew less and less romantic, and I, I gradually drifted away. Oh, you poor darling. Well, we shall have to approach the matter through Olivia. But I always wanted to tell Olivia first. Only you wouldn't let me. That's your fault, Brian. You would tell Olivia she ought to have orange and black curtains in here. But she wants orange and black curtains in here. Yes, but you see, George says he won't have any of this futuristic nonsense in an honest English country home, which was good enough for his father, and his grandfather, and his great-grandfather, and... Uh, well, and all the rest of them. So you see, there's sort of a strained feeling right now between Olivia and George, and I'm afraid if she were to, well, recommend you, it wouldn't do you much good. I see. Of course, I know what you want, Dinah. What do I want? You want a secret engagement. Oh? With notes left under doormats. Oh! And meetings by the withered thorn. Oh! While all the household is asleep. Oh! I know you. Oh, but it is such fun. I love meeting people by with the thorns. Yes. Well, I'm not going to have it. <laughs> oh, Brian, look at us being husbandy. And I adore you. You know, you are rather throwing yourself away on me. Do you mind? Not a bit. Well, we shall never be rich, but we shall have lots of fun and meet lots of interesting people and we'll feel that we're so doing something worth doing. I'm not getting paid nearly enough for it. <laughs> oh, it's an exciting life. And I shall love it. <laughs> And I shall make you love it. You shan't be sorry, Dinah. Oh, you shan't be sorry either, Brian. <laughs> I know I shan't. But what, what will Olivia think about it? Will she be surprised? Well, Olivia? Olivia's never surprised. She always seems to have thought of things about half an hour before they happen. George, on the other hand, just begins to get a hold of them about half an hour after they've happened. <laughs> <sighs> after all... There is no reason why George shouldn't love you, darling. I'm not his sort, you know, really. You are more Olivia's sort. Well, we'll tell Olivia this morning. What are you going to tell Olivia this morning? <laughs> Olivia, darling. Oh, 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 well, I think I can guess. <laughs> Say you understand, Miss Martin. Oh, and how many people know the good news? Well, nobody yet. Except Mr. Pym. No, does he? <laughs> Who's Mr. Pym? <laughs> <laughs> he just happened to... Oh, 
Are those the curtains? <laughs> so you're going to have them after all? <laughs> after all what? No, I decided on these long ago. <laughs> So you haven't told George yet? Well, I tried to, but I never got any further than, um, there's just, um... Uh, George would talk about pigs all the time. Well, I suppose you want me to help you. Oh, do, darling. It would be awfully decent of you. Of course, I'm not quite his sort. You're my sort. But I don't think he objects to me. And... Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Uncle George. There was a Mr. Pym here to see you. Mr. Pym? Never heard him in my life. He had a letter of introduction, Uncle George. Oh, you saw him, did you? Uh, yes, he ran a day in town, but he's coming back. Coming back, you say, Dinah? Then I'll be going back, too. Olivia, send him down to the farm for me when he comes. Uh, hello, what happened to you? Don't go, George. There's something we want to talk about. <laughs> oh, what's this? Shall I? Sir, there's something I wanted to tell you this morning, only I, I didn't seem to have a chance of getting it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it? I... I want to marry Dinah, sir. <laughs> God bless my soul. Oh, what do you say you like the idea, Uncle George? You like the idea? Olivia, have you heard of this nonsense? They've just this moment told me, George, I think they would be happy together. And what do you propose to be happy together on? Well, I know it doesn't amount to much at present, but we shan't starve. Brian sold a picture last March for 50 pounds. Oh? And how many have you sold since? Well, none, but... None! And I don't wonder. <laughs> who the devil is going to buy pictures of triangular clouds and square sheep? And they call that art nowadays. Good gracious, man! Go outside and look at the clouds! If he draws round the clouds in the future, George, will you let him marry Dinah? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course you'd be on the side of all this futuristic nonsense. Well, after all, sir, at my age, one is naturally experimenting and trying to find one's, well, it sounds priggish, but one's medium of expression. I, I shall find what I want to do directly, but I think I shall always be able to end enough to live on. I see. And now you want to experiment with a wife. Y no, no, no. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes. And you propose experimenting with my niece. Well, yes, if you let me. It isn't merely a question of money. I mentioned it as one thing. One of the important things. The whole question demands much more anxious thought than any of you appear to have given it. No. In short, I can at all approve of this hasty engagement. <laughs> Olivia, if this Mr. Pim comes... I shall be down at the farm. You might send him along to me. George, don't go. I have said all I want to say on the subject. Yes, darling, but I have not begun to say all that I want to say on the subject. And I may as well tell you, Uncle George, that I have a good deal to say on the subject. Yes, darling, I can guess what you're going to say, and I think you would better keep it for the moment. <laughs> yes, I did, Olivia. Uh, Brian, you might take her outside for a walk. I expect we have plenty to talk about. And if you do see any clouds, Strange, take a good look at them! <laughs> well, Olivia? Well, George? What are you doing? Making curtains, George. Wouldn't they be rather sweet? Oh, but I forgot. You don't like them. No, I don't like them. And what's more is I don't mean to have them hanging in my house. As I told you yesterday, this is the house of a simple country gentleman, <laughs> and I won't have any of those newfangled ideas in it. Is marrying for love a newfangled idea? We'll come to that directly. What I am saying now is that the house of my fathers and forefathers is good enough for me. 
do you know, George, I can hear one of your ancestors saying that to his wife in their smelly old cave when their newfangled idea of building houses was first suggested. <laughs> the cave of Mars. That's Paul. ridiculous. Naturally, we must have progress. But that's just the point. I don't consider it's progress. It's, it's retrogression. Well, anyhow, it's pretty. There, I disagree with you. And I must say once more that I will not have them hanging in my house. Very well, George. That being so, I don't see the necessity of going on with them. Well, I must do something with them now that I've got the material. Put those beastly things away! Very well, George. <clears throat> ah, that's better. Now, look here, Olivia. You know you're my girl, and that I love you. As much as Brian loves Dinah. I've said all I want to say about that. These kinds of marriages invariably do unhappiness. Mm, of course, my first marriage wasn't a happy one. Olivia, as you know, I dislike speaking of your first marriage altogether. But since you bring it up, well, that is the case in point. Yes, my father made me marry Jacob Telworthy. And when things became too hot for him in England, too hot for him, I think that was the expression we used in those days. Then we went to Australia, and I left him there. The only happy moment I had in all my married life was on the morning when I saw in the papers that he was dead. Yes, yes, dear, that must have been terrible for you. But I don't <laughs> see what bearing this has upon Dinah's case. Well, none, except that my father was fond of Jacob's financial situation and his views on art. I expect that was why he chose him for me. You seem to think I wish to choose a husband for Dinah. I do not. Let her choose whom she likes. As long as he can support her and there's a chance of them being happy together. You are a curious mixture, George. You were so very unconventional when you married me, and you're so very conventional when Brian wants to marry Dinah. George Marden to marry the widow of a convict. <laughs> convict? What do you mean? Jacob Delworthy, convict. I, I forget his number. Surely I told you all this when we got engaged. No! Nah! Oh. <laughs> but I told you how he carelessly put the wrong signature to a check for a thousand pounds in England, and how he made a little mistake about two or three companies he promoted in Australia, and then there were the little... It is, it is, it is. But you never told me he'd been, uh, well, convicted. What difference does it make? Oh, Olivia, if you can't see that. Oh, a convict. So you see, we needn't be so particular about our niece, need we? Oh yeah, I think we'd better leave your first husband out of the conversation altogether. I never wish to hear about him. I never wish to refer to him. And I certainly had not realized that he'd been, uh, well, convicted for his... Uh... <laughs> Mistakes. Oh, that is quite enough, Miss Olivia. If this Mr... Once his name comes, I shall be down at the farm. <clears throat> Finished? Oh no, I still have all this hemming to do. <laughs> I meant talking to George. Um, I haven't said anything yet. No. But I dare say I shall think of something. Come on, Brian. Let's go back out. I feel open airy. Uh, don't be late for lunch. Lady Marden is coming today. Aunt Julia? Help! That means a clean pinafore. And Brian, you jolly well better brush your hair. Somebody's coming! It's Mr. Pym! Mr. Pym, hello! Here we are again. You can't get rid of us so easily, you see. Thank you, Miss Martin. How do you do, Mr. Pym? I, I can't get up, but do come and sit down. Thank you. My husband will be here in a minute. You'll stay to lunch, of course, Mr. Pym. Oh, do! Oh, it's very kind of you. Oh, you enough. simply must, Mr. Pym. You haven't told us nearly <laughs> enough about yourself yet. I want to hear all about your early life. <laughs> we are almost, I might say, old friends, Mrs. Martin. Of course we are. He knows Brian, too. 
There's more to miss to Pym than you think. <laughs> you will stay to lunch, won't you? It's very kind of you to ask me, Mrs. Martin, but I'm lunching with the Trevors. Oh, well, you must come to lunch another day, then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The reason why we like Mr. Pym so much is that he was the first person to congratulate us. We feel that he is going to be a great influence on our lives. I so to speak, stumbled on the engagement this morning and, well... I see. <laughs> All right, run along. You must go and tidy yourselves up. Au revoir, Mr. Pin. We shall meet again. <laughs> you must forgive them, Mr. Pin. Naturally, they are rather excited just now. Naturally, naturally. <laughs> oh, of course, you won't say anything about their engagement. We only heard about it five minutes ago and nothing has been settled yet. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Ah, you must be Mr. Pitt. Sorry to keep you waiting. How are you? How are you? The apologies should come from you, Mr. Martin. Oh, not at all. Very glad to meet you now. Uh, shall I be in your way at all? Oh, no, no. It's just a question of a letter. Yes. Ah, yes, I see. Fanshawe will put you in the way of seeing all that you want to see. He's a very little friend of mine. Uh, I'll send you the response. You'll stay for lunch, of course. Oh, yeah, it's very kind of you, Mr. Martin, but I'm, I'm lunching with the Trevors. Ah, that's all right. They'll look after you, all right? Good trap, Trevor. Oh, yes, very good, very good. Yeah, you see, Mrs. Martin, I'm only recently returned from Australia, after having spent the last several years travelling about the world and... I'm rather out of touch with my fellow workers in London. Oh, I see. You've been to Australia, Mr. Pym? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Um, more than once in the last, um, in the last few years. <coughs> uh, uh, sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Pym. I, I shan't be a moment. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Thank you. Uh, yes, more than once in the last few years. Really? I used to live at Sydney many years ago. Do you know Sydney at all? Oh, um... <coughs> <coughs> Uh, uh, perhaps I'd better mention that you're a friend of the Trevors. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, I spent several months at Sydney a few years ago. Oh, how curious. I wonder if we have any friends in common there. I'd <laughs> 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 uh, like to think Sydney's a very big place. Uh, uh, true, <laughs> true. But the world is a very small place, Mr. Martin. I had the most remarkable instance of that coming over on the boat this last time. Yeah. Yes, there was a man I used to employ at Sydney some years ago, a, a bad sort of fellow, I'm afraid, Mrs. Martin. Gone to prison for some sort of fraudulent company promoting and taken to drink and... Uh, yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> Drinking himself to death, I should have said. Gave him most a year to live, and yet to my amazement, the first person I saw as I came on board the boat to England last week was, was this fellow. <laughs> there was no mistaking him. We, we spoke to each other. I, I recognised him. Didn't meet again on board, and then as it happened at Marseille, this poor fellow. What's his name again? It was an unusual one, I think. It began with a T. Yes, Mr. Pym, yes? Ah, I've got it. Tellworthy. Tellworthy? Good gracious! <laughs> it is an unusual name, is it not? <laughs> not a name you could forget when once you'd heard it. No, no, it is not a name you could forget when once you heard it. Quite so, Mr. Pym. Most peculiar name. Most odd story altogether. Well, here's your letter. If you show you and stay for lunch. Uh, no, no. You see, I, I'm, I'm lunching with the... Uh, with the Charles. Yes, yes. I remember you told me. I'll just see you on your way. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Pym. Goodbye. This way, this way. Thank you. Thank you. Good gracious, Tellworthy! Is it possible? Oh, I don't know, but we can't think about this now. We have to get lunch ready for Lady Martin. Lunch was acceptable, Olivia. Thank you. You're welcome. I know Aunt Julia likes a little music. Dear. No, 
I do not. Uh, your Aunt Trudy had wanted to see the pigs, dear. I wish you would take her down. I'm rather tired and your uncle has some business to attend to. Hmm. I've always said you don't take enough exercise, Olivia. May I come too, Lady Marden? Well, a little exercise wouldn't do you any harm, Mr. Strange. You're a artist, aren't you? Well, I tried to paint. <laughs> he sold a picture last March for 50 Yes, pounds. yes, never mind that now. <laughs> yes, unhealthy life. <laughs> well, come along. Oh. Really, Olivia, we've got something much more important, more vital to discuss than curtains, now that we're alone at last. I wasn't going to discuss them, dear. Of course, I'm always glad to have Aunt Julie in my house, but I wish she hadn't chosen today of all days to come to lunch. It wasn't Aunt Julia's fault. It was really Mr. Pink who chose the wrong day. Good heavens, is it true? About Jacob Tellworthy? You told me he was dead. You always said he was dead! Well, I always thought he was dead. He was as dead as anybody could be. All the papers said he was dead. Ah, oh, the papers. But the Times said he was dead. There was a paragraph about him. Apparently even his death was fraudulent. Uh, yes, yes, Olivia, I'm not blaming you, but what are we going to do? That's the question. What are we going to do? Oh, it's horrible. You've never been married to me at all. You don't seem to understand. Well... It is a little difficult to realize. You see, it doesn't seem to have made any difference to our happiness. No! That's what's so terrible. I mean, of course we're quite innocent in the matter, but at the same time, we had no right to be happy. Would you rather we had been miserable? Your Tellworthy's wife. That's what you don't seem to understand. Your Tellworthy's wife. Uh, pardon me, Olivia, but it's the horrible truth. You committed bigamy when you married me. Ugly word, isn't it? Well, what are we going to do? You sent Mr. Pym away so quickly. He may have told us things. Where he is now, tell Worthy's plans. You hurried him away so quickly. Yeah, I've sent note round to ask him to come back. My one idea at the moment is to get him out of the house to hush things up. You can't hush up two husbands. You can't. <laughs> Everybody will know. Everybody. Jacob Tellworthy may be alive, but I am not his wife. I ceased to be his wife when I became yours. You were never my wife. <clears throat> Legally, we've been living in... Living in... Well, the point is, how does the law stand? I imagine Tellworthy could get a divorce. A divorce? I presume so. Well, then we could really get married. And we wouldn't be living in, living in, well, whatever we were living in before. <laughs> I can't understand you, Olivia. You talk so calmly as if there's nothing wrong with us having lived together for years without having been married. What seems wrong to me is that I lived for five years with a bad man whom I hated. What seems right to me is that I lived for five years with a good man whom I love. Yes, yes, yeah, I know, I know. But right and wrong don't settle themselves as easily as that. We've been living together when you are Tellworthy's wife. That's wrong. So what you feel is that Tellworthy has the greater claim. You are prepared to make way for him. Both the church and the law would say that I had no claim to make at all, I'm afraid, and I, I suppose I haven't. I see. Well, thank you for making it so clear, George. Of course, whether or not you go back to... Tellworthy is another matter altogether. Naturally, that would be for you to decide. For me and Jacko to decide. Jacko? <laughs> I used to call my first husband Jack. I mean my only husband. <laughs> Jacko. I didn't like the name of Jacob. Jacko seemed to suit him somehow. He had very long arms. 
Poor Jacko. You don't <laughs> seem to realize that this is not a joke, Olivia. It may not be a joke, but it is funny, isn't it? <laughs> I don't see anything funny in a tragedy that has wrecked two lives. Two lives? Oh, but Jacko's life isn't wrecked. It's just been miraculously restored to him. And a wife, too. There's nothing tragic in it for Jacko. <laughs> I was referring to our two lives, yours and mine. Your life, George? Your life isn't wrecked. The court will absolve you of all blame. Your friends will sympathize with you and tell, the, tell you I was a designing woman who deliberately took you in. Your Aunt Julia. Stop it. Do you think I want my house broken up like this? But you want to send me away. I'm not sending you away. You are simply not mine to keep. Whose am I? Your husband's. Tell her this. If I belong to anybody but myself, I think I belong to you. Not in the eyes of the church. Not in the eyes of the law. I do hope Jacko will like these. <laughs> <laughs> Have you no heart? Ought you to talk that way to another man's wife? <laughs> is this just a joke to you? One wants to do what is right. One must do what is right. Of course, it's only that we don't quite agree as to what is right and what is wrong. It isn't a question of agreeing. Right is right and wrong is wrong all the world over. But more particularly in Buckinghamshire, I think. Ah, Dinah! Where's your Aunt Julia? We've seen the pigs, and now she's discussing the art of Lancia with Brian. Uh, I was Dinah, just gonna... dear, bring Aunt Julia here, and Brian too. We have things we want to talk about with you all. Right too. Olivia! Dinah will have to know. I'm very fond of her, George. You can't send me away without telling Dinah, and Brian is my friend. I would have thought that your husband... Well, yes, but we don't know where Jacko is. I was not referring to Jacko. <laughs> Tell her this. <laughs> ah, George and I have had some rather bad news, Aunt Julia. We wanted your advice. So please, sit down. Thank you, Olivia. I can sit for myself. Oh, you should sit too, darling. <laughs> Well, what is it? We've just heard that my first husband is still alive. Tellworthy? Good Lord. George! <laughs> it took me this morning. I was just saying that nothing ever happens around here. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> what does this mean, George? I leave you for... Ten minutes? Barely ten minutes to go look at the pigs. And when I come back, you tell me that Olivia is a bigamist. <laughs> I say. Well, George? I'm afraid it's true, Aunt Julia. What was his name? Tell something. Jacob Tellworthy. So he's alive still? Well, apparently, there seems to be no doubt about it. Didn't you see him die? I should always want to see my husband die before I'm <laughs> married again. Not that I approve of second marriages anyhow. I told you at the time, George. And me, Aunt Julia. Oh, did I? Well, I generally say what I think. You wanted to ask Aunt Julia what was the right thing to do. Good heavens! What is that to do except the one and only thing? I'm sorry, you, you don't want me. I do, Brian. Oh, go on, Mr. Strange. What would you do in George's position? Do? I'd say to the woman I love, you're mine. Let this other damn fellow come and take you from me if he can. And he couldn't. How could he? Not if the woman chose me. Brian! <laughs> it is me, is it? Yes, yeah, stop it with you. I'm afraid, Mr. Strange, that your morals are as peculiar as your views on art. Well, this is not a question of morals or of art. 
There's a question of love. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Isn't it that girl's bedtime yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's two o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> but we'll let her sit up a little longer if she's good. <laughs> it will be good, Aunt Olivia. Only I thought anyone, however important a debate was, was allowed to say, Hear, hear! <laughs> the marriage must be annulled, George. Is that the word? I presume so. And when the marriage has been annulled, what then? Presumably, Olivia would return to her husband. And that's morality. You suggest that George and Olivia should go on living together, even though they have never been legally married? Bless the man. What would the county say? Does it matter? Well, if you really want to know, the men would say, God, she's a fine woman. I don't wonder he sticks to her. And the women would say, I can't see, but she sees in her to stick to her like that. And they'd both say, after all, he may be a damn fool, but you can't deny he's a sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> really? I can't think what young people are coming to nowadays. I think, dear, you and Brian had better go now. We will go. Only I'm just going to say one thing, Uncle George. Brian and I are going to get married. And when we're married, we'll stick to each other. However many of our dead husbands and wives turn up. <laughs> Come on, Brian. <laughs> My, this is a pleasant discussion. I think the discussion is over, George. It's only a question of where I shall go while you're bringing your... Uh, what sort of lawsuit did you call it? Nullity suit? I suppose that is the best thing. If there were any other way, Olivia, what can I do? It's the only way, isn't it? I want to do what's right, what's best. Oh, Olivia, Olivia, you do understand, don't you? Oh, so very, very well, George. Oh, I understand just what you are feeling, and I so wish you could. But then it wouldn't be George. Not the George I married. Oh. Didn't quite marry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you both are speaking a little wildly. I didn't quite marry. Olivia, my darling! <laughs> oh, excuse me, can I mind interrupting? Ah, Mr. Pym, very good of you to have come. Please come in. Who on earth is Mr. Pym? Uh, Julia, it was Mr. Pym who told us about my husband. He came across with him in the boat and recognized him as the tailworthy he knew in Australia. Uh, the fact is, uh... uh... The fact is, Mr. Pym, uh, you gave us rather a surprise this morning, and before we had time to realize what it all meant, you had gone. Uh, a surprise, Mrs. Martin. Uh, not an unpleasant one, I hope. Well, rather a surprising one. <coughs> oh, um... <laughs> I'm afraid I'm rather at sea. Yeah, uh, Mr. Pym, you told us this morning of a man in whom you had met on the boat. A man who had come down in the world, whom you had known in Sydney. A man called Tailworthy. Yes, yes, uh, of course, of course. I, I did say Tailworthy, didn't I? Uh, just to know, Mr. Bim, you're quite certain his name was Tailworthy. Tailworthy, Tailworthy. Didn't I say Tailworthy? Uh, yes, yes, that was it. Uh, poor fellow. I'm going to be perfectly frank with you, Mr. Pym. I feel quite sure that I can trust you. This man, Tailworthy, whom you met, is my husband. Your husband? Husband. Your uh, husband. My first husband. Uh, his death was announced six years ago. I had left him some years before that, but there seems no doubt from your story that he is still alive. His record, the country he comes from, above all, the very unusual name, Tailworthy. Well, uh, it is certainly an unusual name. Uh, your first husband, oh dear me. Well, since he is my husband, um, naturally we want to know something about him. Where is he now, for instance? Well, where is he now? But... Uh, surely I told you. I, I told you what happened in Marseille. At Marseille? Oh, yes, he was... Poor fellow, he was most unfortunate. Well, where is he now? <laughs> That's what we want to know! Please, Mr. Pym. Where is he now? Uh, I told you of the peculiar fatality of Marseille. The, the fishbone? Fishbone? <laughs> he's a herring, I understand. <laughs> Do you mean he's dead? Again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of, of course he's dead. He's, he's 
being dead. No, Mr. Pinlock, I want your husband to have <laughs> Pull yourself together, Olivia. So he really is dead this time. Oh, um, undoubtedly. A fishbone, a fishbone lodged in his, in his throat. <clears throat> dead! Dead! <laughs> 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 Mrs. Martin. <laughs> broke the news rather hastily. Double shock of losing one's husband and being restored to another. A dispensation of providence, George. One can regard it in no other light. Yes. Yes! Uh, 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 much obliged to you for coming down to us this afternoon, Mr. Pym, and you understand that your news, although tardy, is, is most welcome. Uh, I'll see you anyway. And again, our thanks. Oh, not at all. Well, I shouldn't have broken the news so hastily. Oh, uh, goodbye, Lady Marden. Goodbye, Mr. Pym. I'm afraid I broke the news rather too hastily. Uh, uh, Mr. Pym, uh, I believe this is yours. Oh, this isn't my hat at all. Oh, no, oh, no, this isn't my hat. This is my hat. Uh, uh, goodbye. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, this is wonderful news, Aunt Julia. Most providential George. Well, I must be getting along now. Goodbye, Andrea. Say goodbye to Olivia for me. And get Olivia out more, George. I don't approve of these hysterics. You want to be firmer with her. Yes, yes, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Dead! Dead! Olivia! Olivia! Uh, Mrs. Tellworthy. What? I don't understand. Well, if my husband only died at Marseille a few days ago. Yes, yes, I see. Um, uh, well, we can soon put that right. Uh, I'll register in your office in London. We can go up this afternoon. Can't do these things too quickly. We can stay at a hotel. Uh, you and Mrs. Tellworthy. Yes, but... Why do you keep saying that? You are acting so strange today. Not the only I know. Perhaps you don't know me so very well after all. Oh, that's ridiculous. You're my Olivia. Now we get married again quietly. It won't be any the worse. Well, if you want to marry me tomorrow, what oughtn't you to propose to me first? <laughs> propose? Yes, it is usual, isn't it, to propose to a person before you marry her? And, and we want to do the usual thing, don't we? <laughs> Mrs. Terry! <laughs> into words. <laughs> I, I don't want to interrupt, but oughtn't you to be on your knees? It is unusual, I believe. Really, Olivia, you must allow me to manage my own proposal in my own way. I'm sorry. Do go on. <clears throat> Confound it, Olivia. I love you. Will you marry me? <laughs> oh, thank you, George. That was lovely. I will think it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me a kiss. What are you thinking? No, I'm afraid you mustn't kiss me until we are actually engaged. Oh, we needn't take it seriously as all that. Oh, but a woman must take a proposal seriously. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is that the whole question, as I heard somebody say once, 
demands much more anxious thought than either of us has given it. These hasty marriages. Hasty? <laughs> We've only just proposed to me, and you want me to marry you tomorrow. You're talking perfect nonsense, Lydia. You know that our situation is utterly different than, well, any other. All the same, one must ask oneself questions. I have to ask myself whether you can afford to support a wife. You know perfectly well that I can afford to support a wife as my wife should be supported. Oh, I am glad. Then your income, you are not really worried about that at all. You know perfectly well what my income is, and I see no reason for anxiety in the future. Ah, very well. Then we needn't think about it any more. You know, I can't make out what you're up to, Olivia. Don't you want to get married and legalize this extraordinary situation in which we are placed? Well, I must consider the whole question very carefully. I can't just jump at the very first offer I've had since my husband died. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm under consideration, eh? Every suitor is. Well, go on, go on. Well, then, there's your niece. You have a niece living with you. Of course, Dinah is a delightful girl, but one does not like marrying into a household where there's another grown-up woman. But perhaps she will be getting married herself soon. I see no prospect of it. It would make it so much easier, George, if she did. Is that a threat, Lydia? Are you saying that if I do not allow a young strange to marry Dinah, then you will not marry me? A threat? Oh, no, George. But I was just wondering if you love me as much as Brian loves Dinah. Of course I do. I wonder. When two people of our age think of getting married, one wants to be quite sure that there is real community of ideas between them. Supposing after we had been married some years, we found ourselves getting estranged from each other upon such questions as um, Dinah's future, or a comparatively trivial matter like, like the right colour for a curtain, or the advice to be given to a friend who had innocently contracted a bigamous marriage. Think how bitterly we should regret our hasty plunge into a matrimony which was no true partnership, whether of tastes or ideas, or even of consciences. Oh, me. <laughs> Do you remember what you said this morning? <coughs> I? Well, and what did I say this morning? You said that it was quite enough for that young stranger was a gentleman and in love with Dinah for me to allow them to marry. Oh, but is that enough, George? <laughs> well, you said so. Well, George, if you think so too, I'm quite willing to risk it. Oh, my darling one, how jolly. Then we shall have a double wedding. A double wedding? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, me, Brian and Dinah. Now, look here, Olivia. Let us have this perfectly clear. I am not to be blackmailed into giving my consent to Dinah's engagement. Neither blackmailed nor tricked. Our marriage has nothing whatever to do with hers. No, I quite understand. They may take place at about the same time, but they have nothing whatever to do with each other. I see. <laughs> no... Dinah's engagement taking place for many years. No, dear, that was what I said. <laughs> but you said. Now look here, Olivia, apparently you insist on treating my proposal as serious. But isn't it? Have you been trifling with me? <laughs> I've had enough of this. Do you mean all this nonsense? Well, what I do mean is that I'm in no hurry to go up to London and get married. I love the country just now, and after this morning, I'm rather tired of husbands. I've never heard so much damned nonsense in my life. I will leave you to come back to your senses. Mrs. Martin, may I come in? Mr. Pym! Mr. Martin is not, um, here. Uh, no, do you want to see him? No, 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 not for all the world. There is no immediate danger of his return. Uh, no, I, I don't think so, Mr. Pym. What is it? Oh, uh, Mr. Martin would be so angry with me, and, and very rightly so. Oh, I blame myself. I, I blame myself entirely. I, I don't know how it could have been so stupid. Now, what is it, Mr. Pym? My first husband hasn't come to life again, has he? Oh, no, no, no. no. Uh, the fact is, his name was... His name was Pell Whittle. Who's? My husband's? Yes, yes. Henry Pell Whittle. <laughs> Poor fellow. But my husband's name was Tellworthy. Oh, no, no. Dear me, no. Pell Whittle. <laughs> it came back to me suddenly as I reached the gate. Henry Pell Whittle. Poor fellow. Really, 
Mr. Pym, I ought to know. <laughs> Pellwittle. But who is Pellwittle? <laughs> the man I told you about. Who met with the Sainte Fatality at Marseille. Henry Pellwittle? Or was it Ernest? <clears throat> no, no, Henry. <laughs> Poor fellow. But Mr. Pym, you said his name was Tellworthy. Now, how could you? I blame myself. I blame myself entirely. But how could you think of a name like Tellworthy if it wasn't Tellworthy? Ah, oh, now that's the really interesting thing about the whole matter. Yes, Mr. Pym. All your visits here today have been very interesting. Oh, yes, very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> um, you see, Mrs. Martin, when I arrived here this morning, I was greeted by Miss Diana, who was in... Dinah. I beg your pardon. Dinah. Her name is Dinah. Dinah. You're quite right. <laughs> Dinah, yes. Miss Dinah. Uh, she was in rather a communicative mood. She mentioned that before your marriage to Mr. Marden, you had been a Mrs. Uh, a Mrs. Uh, Tellworthy. Tellworthy. Thank you very much. <laughs> she also mentioned Australia. Uh, by some curious process of the brain, when I was trying to recollect the name of the fellow on the boat, who, you will remember, I also met in Australia. <laughs> that is the name, a name equally peculiar... Uh, and, yes, well, I and, quite understand. And, 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 and you will tell your husband you'll, you'll break the news to him? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break the news to him. And I think before he comes back, I shall say goodbye. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Pym. Let us have it quite clear this time. You never knew my husband, Jacob Tellworthy. No. You never met him in Australia. No. You never saw him on the boat. No. And nothing whatever happened to him at Marseille. No. Is that right? I think so. <laughs> Very well then, Mr. Pym. Since his death was announced in Australia six years ago, he is presumably still dead? Undoubtedly. <laughs> then goodbye, Mr. Pym, and thank you so much, Gordon, for all your trouble. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Pym. <laughs> Mr. Pym, you mustn't run away without even saying how do you do. Are you saying to tea? Well, no, um, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Dinah. Mr. Pym has to hurry away, dear. You mustn't keep him. <laughs> well, you'll come again. Oh, I'm afraid I'm only a passerby, Miss, uh, Miss Dinah. Well, why don't you show him out, darling? Oh, if you'd be so kind. All right, then. Come along, Mr. Pym. I'll catch you up. <sighs> I want to hear all about your first wife. But I haven't got a first wife. Then you really haven't told me anything yet. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that, Miss Martin, that I am on your side in this whole affair, and if I may be, and if there is anything I can do to help, I should be awfully proud of being allowed to. Oh, Brian, you dear, that's sweet of you. But it's quite all right now, you know. What? That's what Mr. Pin came back to say. He'd made a mistake about the name. Good lord, a mistake about the name? George is the only husband I have. So, you mean the whole thing? The whole thing. What a silly buffoon. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sure he didn't mean to be. <laughs> Brian, do you know anything about the law? The law? I'm afraid not. I hate the law. Why? Well, I was just wondering. Suppose that... George and I had accidentally married each other a second time, thinking that the first marriage wasn't quite right. And then we found that the first marriage was all right. Well... <laughs> what on earth do you mean? Well, what I mean is there's, there's nothing wrong with marrying the same person twice. Hmm. No, 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 no. A hundred times, if you like, I oh. should think. But once will be enough for me and Dinah, if you could work it... Do, do you think there's a chance? Oh, every chance, dear. Really? I mean, have you squared him? You go and catch them up. We'll talk about this later on. Bless you, right -o. Very nearly. 
Where are you thinking of hanging them? Oh, I don't quite know. I had thought of this room, but I'm not quite sure. Best way is to hang them up. Always take them down again. Yes, I think we might try that. Uh, uh, the only thing is... Uh, what? Well, the carpets and chair covers and cushions and things. Well, what about them? Well, if we had new curtains... You'd want new carpets too, eh? Well, new chair covers, anyhow. <laughs> Well, why not? I suppose that would mean that I should have to go up to London to choose them. You know, that is rather a nuisance. No, I don't know. We, we may go up together one day. Oh, by the way, George, I told Brian, and of course he'll tell Dinah, that Mr. Payman made a mistake about the name. Mistake about the name? Yes. I told Brian that the whole thing was a mistake. I thought that was the simplest way. Olivia, do you mean Brian and Dinah think we've been married all this time? Yes. Olivia, does that mean you are thinking of marrying me? Oh, do you want me to very much? You know I do. Oh, we shall have to keep it very quiet, dear. Yes, of course, of course. And now that you've put Brian and Dinah off the scent by telling them that Pim made a mistake about the name and... It... That was very clever of you, Olivia. I should never have thought of that. <laughs> George, you don't think it was wrong, do you, telling a little lie like that? An innocent deception, perfectly harmless. Yes, that was what I thought about, about what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. Does this mean you'll come to London with me tomorrow and we we'll take out or, or anything else you want? Oh, George. Oh, oh I say. <laughs> Hello. Well, I'm so glad now that Pim has relented about your first husband. <laughs> yes, yes, stupid fellow, Mr. Pim. <laughs> yes, absolute idiot, I think. <laughs> And now that Uncle George has relented about my first husband... Here you get on much too quickly. <sighs> so you want to marry my diner, eh? Well, I do rather, sir. Well, you'd better have a talk with me about it then, straight. Brian. Why, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Come along, I'm going up to town after tea, so we'd better... Are you going to London? Yes, a little business. Oh? Never mind you, young uh... woman. Come along, we'll go down and look at the pigs. I do. Oh, but George, don't go too far, dear. I may want you. All right, go on if you want me. <coughs> Brian and George always discuss me in front of the pigs. <laughs> so tactless of them. <laughs> I see. Are you going to London too, darling? Tomorrow. How, what are you going to do in London? No shopping and one or two little things. With George? Yes. <laughs> and wasn't it lovely about Pim? <laughs> lovely? Well, yes, he told me all about it. Making such a hash of things, I mean. <laughs> Did he make a hash of things? Well, yes, keeping on coming like that. And if you look at it all round, for all he had to say, he needn't have come at all. <laughs> well, I wouldn't quite put it that way, Dinah. <laughs> oh, my, aren't these curtains so jolly? I'm so glad everybody likes them. <laughs> Run and get George and tell him I'm ready, dear. Uh, is he going to put them up for you? Well, I thought perhaps he could reach better. Uh, all right, I'll tell him. George! <laughs> Coming! <laughs> Slow music. As the curtains go up. Mm -hmm. Yes, darling, you wanted me. Oh, yes, I was wondering if you could help me put this curtain up. Of course, dear. I'll get the library steps. I have the honour to inform you that henceforward you are at liberty to regard me your affianced husband. Oh, <laughs> darling! <laughs> uh, no, no, stay there, stay there. Oh. Go, go on, go on, play. What is it? Portrait of Lady Strange. Oh, Brian. Ready, dear? Yes, quite ready. <sighs> oh, dear. Oh, take care, dear. Listen, I don't want to Just remember the fellow's name was Ernest Pellwittle, not Henry. <laughs> not Henry. <laughs> 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 <laughs>